City News starts now. And first tonight, Democrats dominate in Mecklenburg County while a prominent Republican incumbent hangs on by a thread to his seat. Good evening and thanks for joining us at your local election headquarters. I'm Brian Blakely. Good evening. I'm Alicia Barnes and the race for Charlotte City Council's District 6 seat is what Brian was talking about came down to a difference of just a couple hundred votes. Well, here's the latest numbers between Tariq Bakari and Democratic challenger Stephanie Hand for the district representing South Charlotte. 100% of the precincts reporting Bakari winning by just 377 votes. Well, Queen City News has a team of reporters on the ground covering both sides of the election tonight. And we start with Derek Dellinger live from the Republican watch party at Selwyn Pub. Now, Derek, like they say, every vote counts. And this is one race in the district seat six, excuse me, in the district six seat that was very, very close. It was very close, and I think uh, there were pro a few people that probably were probably very, very nervous just a little bit earlier this evening. One of those who was not, though, I can say that for certain, was Charlotte City Councilman Tarek Bakari. Come in, sir, uh, and, and uh, you have won uh, by at least uh, less than 400 votes. Very close race, but you were pretty confident that you were going to be winning this, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I knew we were going to come in uh, losing because uh, of the early voting tallies, and then... I knew that we had ground to make up, and we put in a Herculean effort um, to, to ultimately have a great turnout at, at, at the Election Day polls today, and, and it was creeping up. I mean, everyone was nervous, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm pretty excited for the outcome. I do have to ask, though, our news partners at WBT Radio, they interviewed you. They did interview you this morning. They basically, you were basically hoping for a bit, of a, a, a bit of a tighter race, at least with early voting. Are you surprised by the turnout that came out day of? Uh, I was a little surprised by the uh, delta that existed from early voting, um, but the turnout today was exactly what I was hoping for. A lot of R's turned out, a lot of people supporting us turned out on election day. I think that the, the, the one kind of bittersweet piece for me is the at-large and, and Republican slate. Um, I, I wasn't expecting that. I, and I do have to ask about that because, simply put, outside of Ed Driggs, who was running unopposed, you are really the only other Republican victor in this. Um, is there going to be a, a post-mortem on this, trust trying to figure out exactly what happened? And what do you think happened based, based on your impression so far? Well, I mean, it, there wasn't anything we could have done more. We did it all. I think that, that we will have our post-mortem, but what, what, what the, the, bun the punchline is, is a lot of first-time candidates had a great start, and now that is our new bench for the future. These are the folks that we're going to build upon as we move forward. And we've been steadily declining for over 10 years now. And the excitement was in, that was in this room, I haven't seen anything like that since I was in my 20s here in Charlotte. Local party officials were telling us that there was a significant ground game. And so whatever losses that came wasn't necessarily for any lack of trying. Tell me a little bit about the ground game, specifically for, for, for your district. Yeah, I mean, we, we were every single weekend, almost every day, walking with dozens and dozens of people, knocking on tens of thousands of doors. Um, it was the, uh, uh, probably the single greatest grassroots effort in my 20 years of being involved in Charlotte politics that I've ever seen. And this Republican slate, these are your leaders of the future. Just like I was when I first lost back in 2007, I came back and, and was able to now have my third term on council. These are the leaders tonight that you saw here, first-time candidates. They're going to be doing that in the future. Okay, we will leave it there. Thank you very much, sir. That is uh, Charlotte City Councilman Tarek Bakari. And again, uh, the Republicans still uh, not necessarily coming out on top of the at-large seats. However, Democrats did. We'll have more on that coming up in just a moment. For now, we're live at Selwyn Pub. Derek Dellinger, Queen City News. All right, Derek, thanks for that. And as we told you earlier, it was a clean sweep for Democrats running this election. And Charlotte Mayor Vi Lyles will remain the mayor of the Queen City for another term. Let's take a look at the numbers now. 100% of the precincts are reporting right now. Lyles took 68.42%. Her Republican challenger, Stephanie Bilboa, 31.32% of the vote. Lyles goes on for a third term as Charlotte's mayor. Well, overall turnout was small as local elections go at 12 
12 percent. Democrats did take all of the Charlotte City Council at large seats. Incumbents Dimple Ashmera, Braxton Winston win, along with Lawana Slack Mayfield, who returns to public office. And former City Council member James Smudgy Mitchell makes his return to council after stepping aside last year due to conflicts of interest. All right, let's go now to Queen City News reporter Will Lewis live at the Democratic Watch Party at Heist Brewery, where they are celebrating a big win tonight. Will, behind you sounds very loud. I can see lots of people there enjoying the watch party. Uh, give us an idea as to what's going on there. Yeah, Alicia, they are very excited. You know, a lot of the winners got up on stage and spoke, and the party's kind of breaking up a little bit. But, you know, a lot of the time, the eyes were on those results of the District 6 seat between Stephanie Hand and incumbent Tarek Bakari. Now, as you were mentioning, Bakari has won that seat. So that means there'll be two Republicans on the Charlotte City Council, and the rest will be Democrats. And that does include, like you were saying, the return of Luana Slack Mayfield and James Smudgy Mitchell. But now the chair of the Mecklenburg Party says that this was a great night for the Democrats up and down the ticket. They say that they, the candidates and the winners that won say they're honored to serve and they're ready to get to work and continue what has been going on in previous years. Now the candidates also said even though that the Democrats have a majority that the fighting on the Charlotte City Council needs to stop and everybody needs to work for the good of Charlotte residents. When we have a council that's made up of people that care deeply about the city, the party doesn't matter because every bit of what we do in Charlotte is about local, what we have to do for the people in this city. So Democrat and Republican, we're going to work together to move forward. At the end of the day, picking up the trash or it's not a Democratic or Republican issue, the trash needs to be picked up. Uh, how we uh, recruit companies to Charlotte is not a Democratic or Republican issue. We just need to bring companies to Charlotte. And so hopefully the council will be focused on those issues that are important, whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or independent. Yeah, a lot of people preaching that message of working together. Now, you know the Charlotte City Council will have a shorter time to govern just because of everything moving with the election. And so, like Mayor Lyle said, it'll be between eight to ten months of governing. And she says that the Charlotte City Council can do a lot in that time period. And they say the top issues will be affordable housing and making sure that transportation is also one of those priorities. We're live in Charlotte, Will Lewis, Queen City News. Will, thank you so much for that recap and for a full breakdown of every race in the Queen City and beyond. And you can go and be able to scan this code that you see right here on your screen. It's the QR code that we have for you, and it'll take you right to our election coverage on our website at QCNews.com. And be sure to also download the QC News app to get race results sent directly to your smartphone as soon as they come into the newsroom.